What is love? This man is saying goodbye to a friend who has decided to travel to Paris to be with his dying lover. But what he doesn't know is that the man is ready to die early so as not to drag him down. A silent all-night vigil in a phone booth, waiting to hear back from Paris. A man lying in a hospital bed, silently pining for a distant lover. Now, let's go into the French movie, Player Aimer at Corrivite. Follow me to feel the love across life and death. A, 35, is an over-the-top writer. He lives in bustling Paris. This should be the best age for a man to fight for his career. But Jake has no expectations for her future. He lives with his son Tim. On this day, he received a message, a man's voice across the room. He tells Jake that he is sick, but he has nowhere to go now. So, he wants to come and stay here in Jake for a few days. Jake looks sad and hesitant. A friend advises him not to agree, because this guy on the phone is Jake's ex-boyfriend. Yes, Jake is a homosexual. In a sense, Jake is not a good person. He has many boyfriends, but because he was friendly, those boyfriends ended up being his good friends. But occasionally, they go beyond friends and fulfill each other's needs. Arthur is in his early 20s. He is youthful, lively and sunny. He lives with his girlfriend, but they're not exactly boyfriend and girlfriend. Exactly. Because in the eyes of that girl, it seems, there is no deeper communication between her and Arthur than kissing. So they don't count as a couple. The girl took out her house keys and threatened to throw them away. Arthur tried to stop her, but she still accidentally threw the key on the roof. In the end, it was she who rode Arthur's neck to remove the key from the roof. In fact, the reason Arthur doesn't like being with this girl is because he likes men. Despite appearances, he's a guy with a girlfriend. But in reality, he's always hanging out with all kinds of men. That night, he went to the roadside as usual. He kisses up to a strange man. Meanwhile, on the other side of the world, Jake is invited from Paris to Arthur's city. He's here for the event. After expressing his displeasure with the hotel to the receptionist, Jake arrives at the theater to see the show. A movie is playing in the theater at this time. It just so happens that Arthur was there. Perhaps it's a tacit understanding between homosexuals that Jake and Arthur fall in love at first sight in a dimly lit theater. After sitting in his seat for a few minutes, Jake finally couldn't resist sitting next to Arthur. His wry humor and the unique charm of a mature man captivated Arthur. Originally, Arthur was going to leave early to go out with Jake, but Jake tells him that the movie is worth watching. He would hang around outside the theater for a while. If the two are meant to be, Arthur will see him when he comes out. Maybe it's a desire to get out of the way, or maybe the movie is really worth it. Anyway, Jake left after that. Arthur was left alone to finish the movie. Jake didn't go back on his word. He waited outside the theater door. Just then, a woman appears. She's a friend of Jake's. See Jake in front of the theater. As she pulls him in to talk about many things, she has to take Jake back to the hotel. He could not refuse and had to let his friend take him away. But just after the two had gotten very far, Arthur suddenly came over from the side. When he saw Jake with a friend, he was understanding enough not to interrupt. He just walked ahead of Jake, keeping a short distance from the two men. Soon they arrived at the hotel where Jake was staying. After the woman leaves, Arthur walks over. His goal is simple, to be with the man who makes his heart sing. Different life circumstances, teenage age difference. These conditions make Jake think they're not a good match at all. He doesn't want to hold Arthur up either, but Arthur is undeterred. The youthful fondness is the most innocent. He doesn't want to think about it. The first thing he did was to kiss him. After a moment's pleasure, the two of them went to the lake. Jake talks to him about his past. In a life that spans more than 30 years, Jake is someone who grew up without much love. He will do anything with anyone as long as they can't help him in his endeavors. Although there are not many such people, but he was never a good person anyway. Jake says this in the hope that Arthur will know what to do, but Arthur doesn't think so. He tells Jake that his father was killed when he was 15. For the rest of his life, he walked every day down the road where his father was killed. He was just hoping that his father would pop up one day and take him by the hand. The truth, however, is that the father is dead. He will never be seen again. After finishing the talk, Jake told Arthur her home phone number. Arthur wants to sit in Jake's room and have an in-depth conversation, but Jake turned him down. Citing bad hotel conditions, he still doesn't want to be with Arthur. But when he got back to the hotel, he couldn't help but start daydreaming about the scene where he and Arthur were wrapped up in each other's arms. After the event, Jake returned to Paris. There is another man living in his house. He is Myron, the ex-boyfriend who left him a message earlier. Jake still chooses to take Myron in. He couldn't stand by and do nothing for someone who was seriously ill and whom he had loved. On the other hand, Arthur is driving home when he meets an Oscar who wants a ride. The two men are eyeballing each other in the car, and his girlfriend, sitting on the sidelines, takes it all in. She seems to be understanding something. When he got home, Arthur made out with the Oscar. Meanwhile, Jake can suppress her thoughts and calls Arthur. The two of them talk to each other. Jake told Arthur many stories, 
Arthur doesn't shy away from the fact that he's making out with Oscar. Either, it was this phone call that allowed the two to get to know each other better. The two of them are many years apart, but that doesn't stop them from being soulmates at all. After hanging up the phone, Jake couldn't hold back the urge any longer. After he borrowed a car from a friend, he started driving towards Arthur's house. But while waiting at a stoplight, Jake silently cries. Maybe the music playing in the car is too sad. Or maybe it's just calming down and thinking about your past. Anyway, Jake eventually turned the car around and went home. On this day, Arthur's ex-girlfriend comes to his workplace. She tells Arthur that she has found out about him being gay. Arthur didn't refute it and admitted it all in a big way. He told his ex-girlfriend that when he was with her, he was often with other men as well. But those aren't love. Until recently, he hadn't found his true love. The ex-girlfriend finally let it all go. She talked to Arthur like a friend. She also saw the letters they exchanged. While Arthur was out taking care of things, they say a lot of trivial things in their letters, even though they don't mention anything about love. The words are all about love. Jake is hanging out with friends. Of course, the other guy is also one of his ex-boyfriends. A friend advises him to make others happy as a writer. Instead of lamenting your misfortune all day long, he wants Jake to be happy. The two are chatting away. Jake suddenly received an urgent message. This seems to be something serious happening. When he puts in a call, he realizes that his ex-boyfriend Myron has died. The death of a loved one hits Jake hard. He broke down and cried. After that, Jake had one more important thing to do, which was to go to the hospital for a checkup. Because homosexuals are susceptible to AIDS, Myron died of this disease. So there's a good chance that Jake has AIDS as well. It also turned out to be exactly what Jake expected. He is actively involved in his treatment. As for the outcome, he had already prepared for the worst. The physical and internal pain is immense. Meanwhile, Arthur arrives in Paris. He's going to Jake. Jake refused to visit him after learning the news. He gets a friend to step in and lie to Arthur about not being in Paris. It will be a long time before he comes back. In fact, he was reluctant to let Arthur see himself as he was now. But he couldn't help it. He wanted to see Arthur. So he followed Arthur to the lake and confided in him. Jake tells him that he is now seriously ill. Although he was a writer and a bit of a romantic. But there's no way he's going to allow himself to compose the final love song as it is in the novel. Dreams are never realized in real life. He can't hold Arthur back. Arthur is still so young. He deserves a better future. However, a teenager's obsession with love cannot be easily shaken. He firmly chooses to stay by Jake's side. And Jake has removed her last line of defense and accepted Arthur. Arthur accompanied him on his examination. He also met his son, Tim, and Tim's mother. Arthur and Tim have an endless conversation. Jake got up from the hospital bed with difficulty. He smiled as he looked out the window at the two men. Both were the loves of his life. Immediately after the next second, he fainted on the ground. When Jake wakes up again, Arthur is at his side. His face doesn't look the least bit sad. He also gave Jake his headphones to share his song list with him. Arthur sings along with the music. He also danced happily. It has to be said that Arthur's presence brightens up Jake's life. After being discharged from the hospital, Arthur went home. He went back this time to say goodbye to a friend. Because he decides he wants to move to Paris and live with Jake, he sees Jake's condition deteriorating day by day. So he must stay with Jake. After parting with his friend, Arthur finds a phone booth. He wanted to hurry and tell Jake the good news. In his message, he told Jake that he would wait in front of this phone booth for Jake's reply. What he doesn't know, however, is this. At this point, Jake is already explaining the aftermath to our friends. He's ready to leave this world early. No one knows his body better than he does. He knows his days are numbered, so he wants to get everything in order before he leaves. As for the way he left, the movie does not reveal. And Arthur, who had been waiting by the phone booth, never waited for Jake to call back. Perhaps he'll never in his life wait for Jake to call him back. Well, the movie ends here. We'll see you next time.